Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. As always, we are going to give a couple of minutes to the others to come to the meeting because um, you know that we are on the last sessions of this course. So we're going to try to wait for the others to uh, be in the complete explanation of the topics that we are going to develop in these last three sessions because you know that uh, today is the session number two of this week. So uh, at the end of this one, we are just going to have two more sessions and we are going to complete this course. So we are in the last days. So we are almost done with all the things that we are learning in this uh, course. And also uh, we are going to try to work on the uh, knowledge check that we have on the section number five. Uh, we're going to complete those uh, knowledge check through today, tomorrow, and I think uh, we are going to do it on Thursday, but in this case, we are going to focus on the final exam on the last day of this uh, course. So we are going to wait I think a minute more for the others because we know that um, some of you are like coming from your uh, job or you're doing something uh, else and you need a couple of minutes to uh, join the meeting. So that's why we need to wait a little bit for the others because also you know that we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. Uh, we were talking about a uh, grammatical structure and we are going to continue with that part. We are going to end that topic, but we are going to um, complete the information with uh, some uh, parts, some categories that uh, we need to, to learn about that uh, structure. Then we are going to make like two different activities, we are going to do two exercises. Then we're going to watch a video that is the second video that we have on the platform, the second video of the platform, and we are going to perform or we are going to complete the knowledge check. So we are going to do four different things. Number one, to complete the information that we have uh, or that we learned yesterday that um, we have like couple of information left. So we're going to end that information today. Number two, we are going to um, do two different exercises that are related to, to the topic in which we are going to pay, um, I mean, we are going to put into practice the information that we have about the structures that we were learning. Number three, we are going to watch a video in which we are going to um, learn more about the structure and also we are going to learn something new because in the video we are going to see like a uh, different elements that we can use with that structure too and the number four and the last part is to complete the knowledge check así que vamos a hacer cuatro partes hoy una es completar la información sobre las estructuras que estuvimos eh, viendo ayer o sea vamos a completar esa información Número dos, we are going to make uh, two different exercises. Vamos a hacer dos ejercicios that are related to the structure. Number three, we are going to watch a video. In that video, we are uh, going to reinforce the information that we have about the structure, but also we are going to learn something new. So in that case, we are going to do like two different things at the same time. Vamos a hacer dos cosas al mismo tiempo, es volver a... Eh, analizar la información y ver elementos nuevos. Y la última parte ya es la del knowledge check de la plataforma donde vamos a ir eh, resolviendo el ejercicio. So, now it's time to begin. We're going to begin right now with the information. 
In this case, we're going to share the screen in which we were working yesterday. That is this information. In this case, we have some examples that you give me yesterday about the use of this structure. So we are going to make like a quick review of what is this topic and what are the parts that we have here. So in this case, we have here the topic that is the present perfect tense in which we have what is the present perfect tense in which we were saying that uh, is related to past actions uh, that continue in the present. And you know that the main thing or the most important thing here is the use of the auxiliary have and has. Then we have the next question. How do you use the present perfect tense? In this case, we're going to use it with the auxiliary verbs. The main verb takes a participle form that are specifically the past participle. Yesterday, I sent to you an image, I mean, a link in which you can find uh, the, uh, the table, the different tables in which you are going to find what is the correct form of the verb that you are going to use with this structure. Then we have these examples using the different person that we have. In English, with the first person, second person, third person plural, and third person singular. Uh, in this case, it's just to uh, understand what is the difference between the use of the auxiliary have and the auxiliary has. Then we have three different things that are the present perfect tense for statements, just for a statement or positive statements. Uh, the structure is subject plus has or have plus past participle and the complement. Then we have the number two that are the present perfect tense for negatives. In this case, you are just going to use a negative words like not or never, and you're going to use almost the same um, structure, but in this case, you're just going to use the negative words that are in the middle of the structure, in the middle of have or has, and the verb in past participle. Then we have the number three, that is the present perfect tense for questions. That is the same construction as the question that we were learning and we are going to continue learning during this process of the English acquisition. Why? Because you know that is some, uh, these topics are uh, like the most useful topics or the most, uh, teaching topics in which you are going to see a lot of things related to the questions, but you are going to see this topic again and again and again and again. Don't worry, I am just making a review right now because I know that uh, in some cases you don't have like the time to come to the meeting um, early. So I'm just to wait for it all the participants to be here to continue with the topic. Good evening, and don't worry. That's the word of the people that is working. It's it's natural for you to, to come late with the meeting. Don't worry for that. Okay. Then we were talking about the structure of the question that is the same thing. In this case, you're just going to use the auxiliary at the beginning of the statement, and then you are going to put all the information, all the parts that you have in the same um, like uh, space in which you were writing the uh, elements on the positive statement. Es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Las preguntas siempre se van a hacer con el auxiliar al principio, luego vamos con todos nuestros elementos, como hacemos con nuestras preguntas en presente simple, en pasado simple, en este caso, pues, obviamente utilizando los elementos que corresponden a la estructura. Ahora, aquí teníamos nuestros ejemplos. Those were the examples that you gave yesterday, in which you eh, did a very good job because they are perfect. So now we are going to continue from this part, that is the examples. And now we're going to continue with the next information. Remember that we have different elements that we are going to learn. But in this case, this one is how to use the present perfect tense with adverbs. 
¿Cómo vamos a utilizar el presente perfecto, pero con adverbios? Recuerden que en inglés tenemos muchos elementos, ¿verdad? Que se utilizan para, uh, podemos uh, llamarlo de esa forma, como para adornar, ¿verdad? El lenguaje y que sea como un poco diferente. En una de esas cosas, pues, son agregarle ciertos elementos. And in this case, we're just going to work with the uh, adverbs. So we're going to see how it works. So in this case, uh, it says that you can still use adverbs after the verb as you do normally. In this case, it is not like you're going to change the way in, you, in which you are writing the adverbs. In this case, you can write it in the same way. With the present perfect tense, you can also place the adverb between the auxiliary verb and the past participle. En este caso, nosotros podemos utilizar el adverbio en la forma en la que normalmente lo hacemos, que es la um, estructura normal, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos hablando de los uh, adverbs, que ya tenemos como una parte de los adverbs y que sabemos en qué posiciones más o menos se van a ir colocando, ¿verdad? Estos, estos adverbs. Pero también podemos utilizarlo en medio, ¿verdad? Entre el verbo y el Um, I mean, entre el auxiliar y el verbo en pasado participio. Igual, así como lo estábamos haciendo con el negativo. En medio de esos dos vamos a colocar nuestro adverbio. But we are going to see how it, it works with examples. Okay, we are going to see the structure. In this case, we are going to use has or have. In this case, it's not related to the question. In this case, you know that uh, first you're going to write the subject. But in this case, we're going to focus on this part. Uh, has or have plus the adverb plus the past participle. Aquí es donde estamos viendo, ¿verdad? Que vamos a posicionarlo en medio de esos dos elementos. En medio de el has o el have, que es nuestro auxiliar, y en medio de lo que es el verbo. And we have the examples. They have gradually, they have, gradually advance their career from cashier to senior. Manager. So here we have the structure, have gradually advance their career. Give me a second, give me a second. I'm going to check. Give me a moment. Mm -hmm. I have always needed your love. Very good. Uh-huh. It's uh, like that. Because you are using the adverse. In that case, you have a list of adverse. 
como ese ejemplo que pone Ana Beatriz, es un muy buen ejemplo, donde nos aparece, ¿verdad?, el uso de los adverbios. Ahí ella está utilizando el adverbio del 100%, que es el always, I have always, neither you love. Very good. Es, es un muy buen ejemplo. Lo vamos a poner más abajo, ya que nos, nos dio este ejemplo por acá. Que uh, creo que también ya lo habíamos visto. I have always needed to love. Like this. Aquí básicamente es que vamos a jugar con la información que ya teníamos de los adverbs, que ya veían ustedes que hay un porcentaje del 100% to 0%, in which we're going to represent, um, in, we can say like in time, how many actions we perform in a day, in a week, in a month. Son esos, eh, I mean, esos adverbios que nos permiten a nosotros hablar de la frecuencia, ¿verdad? De la frecuencia de cosas que nosotros hacemos. En este caso también podemos agregar otro tipo de, de adverbios. No simplemente nos vamos a quedar con los adverbs of frequency, porque hay una gama bastante amplia de adverbs que podemos utilizar. Let me see if I can find a list of adverbs that I can share with you, like I did yesterday with the link. But in this case, I'm going to like search for images because it's easier to send to the group. Adverbs. Because in this case, we need this kind of information because in that case, we are going to complete one information with the other. And that is the most important thing because we are constructing some information. So we have here, this one is kind of long. Uh, we have adverse and we have adverse of manner, adverse of time, adverse of place, and adverse of frequency. Así que tenemos acá, um, en esta aparece cuatro tipos de adverbios. In which sentences? En, en esas dos, en la primera, en esta, gradually, gradualmente, es el adverbio de esta. Y en esta otra, always, es el adverbio. Gradualmente y siempre. What is my sentence? In which sentence? Okay, I'm going to send to you two, two different uh, images. I'm going to send to you the type of adverbs in which we have an explanation. En esta es una explicación de los tipos de adverbios que podemos encontrar. Primero aparece qué es un adverbio, la posición del adverbio y luego diferentes. Yes, gradually is the adverb. La palabra gradually, gradualmente, es el adverbio en esa oración. Está diciendo que ella, uh, ah, ¿de qué tipo? Ok, in this case, uh, let me explain something. <laughs> Tenemos, in this case, you're going to find eight types. Vamos a encontrar ocho tipos por acá, donde tenemos uno de tiempo, time, donde nos deja saber que algo pasó, ¿verdad? En qué momento. Luego, tenemos del lugar donde nos habla de qué está pasando, en dónde, o sea, en, específicamente en qué lugar. De man, el de manner, o maneras, o, o de formas, eh, generalmente nos dice cómo está hecho algo. Este, básicamente, lo podemos tomar como de manera. 
gradually, puede ser de, de manera, porque nos está explique, explicando cómo se hizo. Y aquí dice, gradualmente avanzó de su, en su carrera de eh, ser una cajera a ser una manager. Entonces, aquí es de manner, gradualmente avanzó. Luego tenemos los de frecuencia, que ya lo veíamos, donde aparece always, usually, never, sometimes. Then we have focusing, and these adverbs go in the middle of the sentence to emphasize the meaning of the sentence. Esto van a, en medio de la oración y nos sirven para enfatizar el significado de esa oración. Luego tenemos certainty, que es como la certeza. And in this case, these adverbs are also in the middle of the sentence and give us an approximation to as to what could happen. Estos también van en el medio de la oración, pero nos está acercando eh, o nos está dando una aproximación a qué podría pasar. No estamos hablando de, de algo certero, sino de algo que podría llegar a pasar. Then we have evaluative, que son evaluativas donde dice que se utiliza para evaluar lo, lo que encontramos, ¿verdad? Nuestros eh, findings a través de la oración que está relacionado con algo que ya se dijo. Estos son los que ya tenemos como un eh, previous knowledge about the situation. Then we have the viewpoint, que es el último tipo, que son los, los de punto de vista, donde dice, these are used to share a view and are put at the start of the sentence. Estos se ponen al inicio de la oración y nos eh, permiten ver un punto de vista. Entonces, les voy a mandar esta parte donde se nos explica los diferentes tipos de adverbs, porque no solo tenemos un tipo, tenemos muchos. Y voy a mandarles también ejemplos. Adverbs of place, adverbs of time, adverbs of degree, adverbs of frequency adverbs. Adverb of manner. We have also linking adverbs, que son como para unir. Eh, sentence adverbs. Irregular, que son como algunos ejemplos de, de, de adverbs que no cambia, ¿verdad? No es como, eh, en este caso, el, 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 algunos adverbs que al final se le agregan como ciertas letras para que cambie, ¿verdad? Su significado. Y también les voy a mandar ejemplos de adverb of evaluation. Son diferentes tipos de, de, de ejemplos. So, it's kind of uh, useful for you. Porque esos ejemplos uh, que les estaba dando, o esas um, definitions, are not the, the, just the unique uh, adverbs. We have different kind of adverbs that we can use in English. You know that it's kind of hard to find all of the types in one in just one moment. So you need that is kind of complex. Es, es complejo, ¿verdad? Esto de, de aprender todo de una sola vez y tampoco es muy bueno porque podemos llegar a confundirnos. Así que les voy a mandar las dos imágenes en este momento para que ustedes tengan acceso a ellas y las puedan ir estudiando despacio, ¿verdad? No es necesario que que se haga de una sola vez, porque podemos llegar a confundir. So, give me a moment. I'm going to send to you the images that are just kind of explanation. Let's see, let's see. Okay, there. One and two. We have some explanation about the adverbs and some examples. There are the images. Ya tienen sus imágenes en el grupo. So we're going to continue from the other part. Vamos a continuar ya con lo demás para terminar ya este tema. Porque tenemos la actividad y tenemos también lo de la, del knowledge check. So, in this case, we have the two different examples. 
uh, related to the use of adverbs. In this case, it is not just one type of adverb. You can use different type of adverbs in this case. And also, we have another example here. In this case, it's not at the very beginning of the statement, it's at the end. In este caso, vamos a ver una construcción ya al final de, de la oración. Oh, the guest. All the guests have already arrived. So, los invitados han llegado. In this case, this last part of the statement is the, um, the structure that we are using. In this case, already is the adverb here. In this case, uh, we need to be very careful because uh, certain adverbs as uh, yet and just have a special rules from where they are played. Um, because these adverbs related to time, they are often used together with the present perfect tense. Hay algunos adverbs que si tienen como su regla específica, así como es el yet and just, que tienen una forma eh, como ya establecida de dónde se van a situar. Y también eh, dice que estos ad, eh, adverbios que tienen que ver con el tiempo se usan eh, en muchos de los casos junto con el present perfect. The adverb yet used often with a negative or in questions almost always comes at the end of the sentence or clause. Cuando utilizamos yet, eh, en este caso lo vamos a utilizar con negativos o con preguntas. Y casi siempre va a ir al final de la oración o de una cláusula. So we have here the examples. And it says, sadly, he hasn't finished. The race jet. El no terminado la carrera aún. Have you finished your homework yet? Now, for the ending of this part, vamos a terminar esta parte con um, six examples of when to use the present perfect tense. Seis ejemplos de cómo deberíamos o de um, cuándo deberíamos utilizar nuestro present perfect tense. That is the last part. We are just going to end this one. Vamos a ponerlos por números. Number one. 
an ongoing action that started in the past but has not yet been completed. Vamos a utilizar esta estructura cuando estemos hablando de una acción que está sucediendo, que inició en el pasado, pero que no ha sido completada. En este caso podemos ver este, estos ejemplos. It says, the professor has tasked here for two decades. So in this case, we can see that these kind of examples are related to uh, some actions that start in a specific time in the past and it's continuing until the present. Es uh, bastante um, fácil, ¿verdad? De, de entender ese tipo de contexto porque en este ejemplo donde dice que el profesor pues ha estado enseñando en ese lugar por dos décadas, entonces nos habla de que ya lleva un, un par de años, ¿verdad? Eh, trabajando en el mismo lugar, algo que inició hace tiempo atrás y que todavía continúa y no se detiene porque no es tiempo todavía. So, in that kind of action, in that kind of uh, statements, we can see this kind of um, explanation related to ongoing actions that started in the past, but has not yet completed because it has, like, more time to complete that action in the future. Next one, number two. A series of the same action completed multiple times in the past, likely to happen again in the future. In this case, it is like um, a lot of actions that maybe are completed in the past, but it is not that it has end in the past. Maybe it could happen in the present or even in the future. Muchas acciones que tal vez se repitieron varias veces estas acciones, se completaron, pero que así como se, se hicieron varias veces en el pasado, puede llegar a suceder en el futuro. Entonces es como eh, incierto, pero tampoco es poco probable. In this case, we have the example. I've seen the movie six times. I've seen the movie six times. This is something uh, <laughs> kind of funny because it's not like uh, something that is not, uh, it's not fantasy, it's a reality. Because when we like a movie that much, we can see that movie multiple times. I know that you have a, a specific movie that you like to watch once and again and again and again. And maybe um, you watch that kind of movies when you are feeling sad or maybe when you want to, uh, I don't know, change your mood. Or something like that. Shrek. Ah, that is a very good one. I think when you are feeling sad, you can uh, watch Shrek and you are going to be 
in a different mood because it has something different that, that make you uh, laugh. And it is kind of interesting because when you see the movie, it's not like you are going to get bored with the movie. You are going to find new things on the movie. That is a good example. But for me, I think that, um, yes, it is funny. It's pretty good. I like to watch Lord of the Rings. I think, I know that it's kind of long. It's kind of uh, heavy to watch that movie because of the time. It's a, a long movie. But when I am feeling like tired, and, and you are going to say, what? You're feeling tired and you're watching a long movie. But when I'm feeling tired and I have time, I like to watch The Lord of the Rings because I I like uh, the environment, the story, uh, the characters. It's, it's pretty good. I, I I like to do that kind of thing. Number three, an action that was completed very recently, often used with just for now. This is actions that are completed uh, very recently in this time. Acciones que hemos realizado o que hemos completado muy recientemente. Y en muchos de los casos utilizamos just o now. In this case, we have the example. I shouldn't eat any anymore because I just brush my teeth. Ten times, he imagined that it's like something that he really enjoy. Hmm. What is the movie that I have seen like many times? Hmm. Let me think. I I guess yes I guess that I have seen uh all of the movies of Harry Potter I'm alone oh good yes in that case I'm alone because uh, it's like a memory when we were like children or very young but in my case it's Harry Potter because I really enjoy Harry Potter and I like the books and also I like the movies and when I was like very young I watched that the movie because it was on television but then I made my dad to buy me uh, this DVD uh, uh, CD in which we have the movies and I was like I have a uh, DVD player uh, and a small a small TV. So I put uh, the, the CD on the DVD player and I watch the movies once again and again and again because I, I feel like very, uh, I don't know, it's kind of amazing. But now uh, as an adult, I watch the movies again when I have time because I don't know, it's like something related to my childhood, I guess. But it's it's pretty good. But I think it's the the movies that I have seen a lot, and I have the books also and some figures. I shouldn't eat anymore because I just brushed. I did. This case, está diciendo que no deberíamos de haber comido porque nos acabamos. En este momento es una acción que está completada en este momento. Nos acabamos de lavar los dientes, por eso no debíamos haberlo hecho. 
porque acabamos de hacer esta acción. Number four, a change over time. Very short. And it says, my cousin has grown so much since I saw her two years ago. A little changes that we can see in, in this kind of situation. Number five, a non-complete action that is expected to be finished in the negative form. Um, I learned uh, English at the university. Of course, it was difficult. I have problems. I had and I have uh, because we're talking about two different uh, times. Uh, I had problems and I have problems with grammar. Uh, for me, it's one of the most difficult things. Uh, because in some cases we are focusing so much on the uh, structures. And you know that in our country, uh, the way to teach English is to uh, teach about the structures that we need to use when we are uh, talking in English. But when you are talking with a neighbor, native speaker, you are not going to use the structure as the, the rules that we have on the learning process. You may feel frustrated and that's okay because um, it's a process, it's a long process. For some people it's kind of easy and I admire that kind of people uh, because they have this facility to understand everything very fast. But in my case, I am not like that kind of fast learner. Um, at the beginning, I was thinking, ah, it's not really hard to learn English. It's just to practice. It's just to um, say something in English. But uh, then I find myself uh, thinking about it, if that was a really a smart decision, because I, I feel like very... Um, frustrated, overwhelmed, and in some cases I said, I don't want to learn this thing anymore because I feel like I was not um, doing anything because some of my classmates were talking in English and I was like, what is the thing that I am doing in, in this place? But um, I was like a very shy person. <laughs> Maybe you, you can see uh, or you can tell. It is not true, but I was a very shy person. And I learned, I gained information, but I didn't see anything. I didn't say anything because I, don't, I didn't like to speak with others because I feel like, and I know that in some cases you feel like this. Um, if I make a mistake, if someone uh, thinks that I don't know anything um, or I am pronouncing this word incorrectly, and I, I find myself writing, just writing, uh, and I send messages in English and I write some things in English and it was okay. And some people say, why well, you are not uh, talking in English? And I said, ah, I don't feel good with my production. And when I was at the university, I didn't produce a lot. And that is something very bad. I just talked with some of my classmates, but that's it. And after that, I began working 
on a private school. And I was like le uh, teaching English, but just like very basic things. Then I said, uh, I need to, to speak in English because I am not doing anything with the information that I, I have. And I began talking with people from other countries and I find myself talking and was, I can do it. And now I am here like giving this kind of sessions to you that you are learning um, these things. But the first thing that you need to, to do is never give up as Nazario said, but also is to practice not producing the language. Maybe it's not the, 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 the thing. It's to feel comfortable with your voice in another language. Es sentirnos bien con cómo se escucha nuestra voz en otro idioma, porque a veces decimos, ay, es que me enredé, me trabé, me... y no lo, produ... no, no lo pronuncié bien. Pero si ustedes llegan a hablar con personas del extranjero o que han vivido mucho tiempo en el extranjero, les van a decir, ah, como te salga mejor. Ah, hay muchas maneras de pronunciarlo, muchos acentos, muchos. Entonces, la manera en que ustedes se sientan cómodos. Cuando ustedes ya se sientan cómodos, ustedes van a empezar a producir. Ahora, eh, ¿qué es necesario hacer? Vocabulario. Todo lo que nosotros queramos aprender en inglés, hay que buscarlo en inglés. Ah, I need to talk about fruits. ¿Qué voy a buscar? Vocabulario relacionado con frutas. Y voy a ir posiblemente una palabra al día. Exactamente. Hay que también ponerle un poco de tiempo a eso. Ustedes están en su trabajo y ustedes pueden llevar... Um, es something is very popular in, in Japan que son como unos uh, ficheros o, o unas fichas que, que vienen como eh, tipo, ¿cómo les podría decir? Um, no es como una libreta, sino que ellos lo andan como tipo uh, llavero o algo así. Y ellos llevan las palabras, llevan la palabra en inglés y al otro lado llevan su palabra en japonés. En este caso sería nosotros, nuestra palabra en inglés y nuestra palabra en español. Y ustedes pueden ir una palabra al día, ponerse un propósito. Primero, una palabra al día, una palabra nueva, una palabra nueva, hasta que se me quede, hasta que ya, ya no se me olvide qué significa esa palabra. Y así vamos a ir avanzando. It's a long process, but you are going to do it at the end. Y va a ser bastante sencillo después, porque ya las palabras ya las vamos a tener. Yo no puedo construir una oración si yo no tengo vocabulario porque voy a utilizar las mismas oraciones simples que ya aprendí, pero no voy a poder avanzar desde ahí. Ya no voy a poder mantener una, una conversación un poco más larga, porque ya no tengo palabras que utilizar. Entonces, lo primero es el vocabulario. Ya luego vamos a ver cómo se pronuncian esas palabras. Y luego, cómo lo construimos. Exacto. Don't feel afraid. And it's like when you are speaking in Spanish. Es cuando empezamos a hablar... Los niños no tienen miedo a equivocarse. Los niños dicen las palabras como les salen. Y a partir de ahí van construyendo y van uh, mejorando. Que ese es el punto. Primero construimos, luego mejoramos. Porque hace poco, I was uh, helping someone with a, with a video. Estaba ayudándole a alguien con un video. Eh, he's going to be a, a pet. And he's learning English. Uh, and he has this activity in which they are going to explain something related to, to uh, animals or, and sickness and all of that things. And it was a word. I don't remember what is the word, but it has this specific word that he feel like he's not pronouncing very well. Él no estaba pronunciando esa palabra bien porque tenía problemas para pronunciarla. Era un poco difícil porque era nueva para él. Y yo estaba tratando de explicarle cómo podía hacerlo. O sea, en, en palabras simples, en formas simples de, de producirlo. Y había una persona que ha estado mucho tiempo en el extranjero y le dijo, no, no, no es necesario que lo pronuncie de esa misma manera. Lo puede pronunciar de la manera que a usted le salga mejor. Y la cuestión es, yo le entiendo Claro que sí. Entonces, ¿por qué se preocupa? 
Y ahí es donde yo me quedé también. Ah, entonces no es tan necesario que nosotros lo hagamos exactamente como nos dice, ¿verdad? Porque a veces eh, nos enfocamos tanto en eso que nuestro cerebro está pensando solo en las reglas. Ah, ¿qué decía la regla para esto? ¿Qué decía la regla para esto? ¿Qué decía la regla para esto? ¿Y qué decía la fonética? Es importante, sí, pero también es importante que empecemos nosotros a producir. And I think that is, it is not that complicated in that way, but you need to, to feel comfortable with the words that you learn and continue doing this kind of things. You can search someone that can help you with uh, practicing conversations, or also you can read some books and listen some audiobooks in which you're going to like make a comparison between the words that you are uh, reading and the words that you are listening. And also don't uh, focus just on American English. You can use UK English, Australian English, and different kind of English to compare the pronunciations and to find what is the one that you need to, to pronounce. No es necesario que pronuncien el inglés como lo hacen en Estados Unidos. Ustedes pueden pronunciarlo como lo hacen en el Reino Unido, como lo hacen en Australia. Es la forma en la que ustedes se sientan cómodos con el inglés. So don't worry, you are going to, to do it very well in the future. You are just in the way to do it. This is the first step, don't worry. Don't worry. You need to, to continue doing this, this job because you are doing very well. It's great. So you are doing a good job. This example. I mean. In it, this example said, the jury has not reached a verdict yet. The jury has not reached a verdict yet. And the last one, number six, to add significance to a completed action. Aquí le agregamos significancia, ¿verdad? A una acción completa. To add significance to a completed action. And we have the example. Macbeth has killed the king. This is part of the Macbeth. It's a very good um, a story. It's a story very good, this Macbeth. Macbeth has killed the king. So in this case, we have all the, the information related to this um, structure. Remember that in this case, you need to focus on the use of the auxiliaries and the use of the specific uh, form of the verb. Son las cosas que ustedes tienen que tener en cuenta. El uso del auxiliar y el uso de la forma correcta del verbo, que ya tienen ustedes su avance con eh, la lista que yo les mandaba del enlace. Y también vimos lo de la parte de los adverbs, que también ya les mandé dos imágenes para que ustedes tengan una idea. Now, I'm going to show you the video and we are going to end this session in a couple of minutes. So I think we have enough time to complete the video and the knowledge check, I guess, I guess. Because this one is just three minutes long because we have to see the use of jet and already and then we're going to see if we can complete the knowledge check. So give me a moment. Let's pay attention. Present perfect with already and yet. Ask and answer questions in present perfect 
with irregular and regular past participles. I want you to concentrate on this new tense. Notice how it is formed. Pay close attention to the words already and yet. Present perfect. Already, yet. The present perfect is formed with the verb have plus the past participle. Have you been to a jazz club? Yes, I've been to several. No, I haven't been to one. Has she ridden in a streetcar? Yes, she's ridden in one. No, she hasn't ridden in one. Has he called home lately? Yes, he's called twice this week. No, he hasn't called in months. Have they eaten dinner yet? Yes, they've already eaten. No, they haven't eaten yet. Contractions I've equals I have. You've equals you have. He's equals he has. She's equals she has. It's equals it has. We've equals we have. They've equals they have. Haven't equals have not. Hasn't equals has not. For present perfect, we will use have or has plus past participle verb plus complement. The verb have or has will depend on the person we will talk about. We use present perfect when we want to express actions which began in the past and continue in the present. Example, she has worked in the bank for five years. We have had the same car for 10 years. When we want to make reference to an unfinished temporary period of time, I have worked hard this week. It has rained a lot this year. We haven't seen her today. Repeated actions in a specific period of time between the present and the past. They have seen that film six times. We have eaten all that restaurant many times. When timing is not relevant or it is unknown, someone has eaten my soup. Now let's talk about already and yet. Already usually goes after have or has and before the main verb. Examples, we have already had our breakfast. When are you going to do your homework? But I've already done it. Yet means that something that we expected has happened or hasn't happened. We usually put it at the end of a sentence. Examples, has the post arrived yet? Have you done your homework? Not yet. Haven't you got ready yet? Look at the time. Okay, that was the explanation for the use of already and yet. In that uh, case, you're just going to use it in, in a specific uh, place. And in this case, we're going to complete this one because, because we have two minutes to do it. So let's go. I have time or we have time, I mean. So we are just going to complete the conversations. We are just going to use the present perfect of the verbs in brackets. Vamos a utilizar el, el presente perfecto de los verbos que están en paréntesis. En el primero, tenemos do y tenemos tres opciones. Have sung, has sung, or have done. What is the correct answer for this one? Have done, teacher. Have done. Number three. Number three, okay. Vamos a ver la número dos. Yes, I are ready to aerobic class for time. Y tenemos el verbo be. Has been, did be, have been. Number three. Number three. Number three, okay. Next one. You, any sport this month? Verb. Play, have played, has played, have played. Number one. Number one. Number one, okay. Next one. No, I, the time, verb have, haven't had, haven't had, or haven't had. Number three. 
Number three, haven't had. Okay, next one. How many movies do you this month? We have the verb see, have are, have seen, have been. Number two. Number two. Number two, okay. Next one. Actually, I and yes, verb see, haven't seen, haven't saw, haven't seen. Number two. Number, number one. Number one. Number one. Number okay. One. You to any interesting parties recently? Verb be. Have be. Have been. Have have are. Number two. Number number two. Number two. Okay. Next one, no, I to any parties for quite a while, and we have the verb go. Haven't went, haven't go, haven't gone. Number one. Number one, okay. You, any friends today, and we have the verb call. Have called, have called, have called, have called. Be sure in the number eight is it's not the number three. It's the number, it's number three. three. Yes, teacher. Gone. Mm. Participle. <laughs> in the case it's not went. This is just past. I can be hard to think. Last el listado también. Oh, yes. ah, number nine. ¿Cuál es el correcto para el número nueve? Um, have a cold. Have number a call. one. Number one. Okay. And the last one, number 10. Yes, I already three calls. Make, have made, I've make, I have make. Number one. Number one, okay. Number one. Vamos a revisar. Ya para terminar. Exacto, todas están correctas. Recuerden que la base para esta estructura es que lleve nuestro auxiliar have or has y que el verbo esté en pasado participio es You're una right. de las cosas principales very good so we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow so have a really good night and see you tomorrow have a really good night good everyone night. see you good night, good night. See you tomorrow good night good night, good night. see you tomorrow See you.